Thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, Bala certainly introduced me to this very early days where Indigo, where he would come over to talk about possible people whom we could actually rope in uh, at, the, at the scale of actually uh, managing and addressing aspects of it. So <clears throat> I'll be very brief. I just want to uh, look at the, you know, when this uh, the suggestion of a panel discussion came up, I said I'll just look at it from the perspective of a project where there are certain needs. And I've just uh, listed a few things here, uh, which are all very obvious. Uh, in terms of near-term needs, this project requires full funding. We heard some positive remarks today from Perun. Uh, early recruitment of additional staff, emphasized by many of you. Established smooth communication channels across core stakeholders. Fred mentioned that. Uh, enforced practice of detailed documentation. Uh, this is something we have learned from the space community as well. Uh, established a rigorous review process, something that is extensively done uh, in uh, at Israel. Um, Monitor LIGO India construction phase, keeping within schedule. Keeping within schedule is very tight. We also have uh, had some experience with that, and we are working with international partners on, on space missions. Comprehensive schedule management, and I really believe we really need this to really do a lot of our contingency planning and rework. Training has been emphasized, and operating as a laboratory, and of course, uh, looking at upgrades. So many of these are obvious things. I'm just trying to put it up here. and. Uh, there is a need to address the fact that these are institutions, key institutions and with different environments in which they're coming in. Are uh, different uh, departments they belong to. There are slightly different philosophies and styles of operation with regard to purchase, hiring, uh, maybe travels, outreach, etc. At present, from my perspective, as I see from the uh, limited interaction I have in, in, the, in the science management board and uh, other LIGO India meetings, I get the feeling that there's a weak coupling between what I call the user scientists and the, and the instrumentation team. And a good example of that, I think, is I don't, in today's meeting, I don't see one group at all. I mean, there may be some limitations, but the fact that that exists is a serious concern. It's a very, very serious concern, in my view. So there is a need for an interface team, I call it, uh, of a dozen that can bridge the user community with these experimentalists. And this team, has to be a core team on which the whole system is to, is to depend on. It has to evolve to ensure complete understanding of all aspects of LIGO India hardware would play a key role in this commissioning phase. Um, I mean, we see the same thing when you have build experiments. You have payloads uh, uh, where uh, someone comes with a great idea, um, but maybe there's less of a capacity to actually do the prototyping of the experiment in their own laboratory, and it's sometimes being outsourced to an engineering team to do it. And there we see this disconnect between a complete realization of a science goal from the instrumentation. So there's a real need to have scientists who work very, very closely with engineers, you know, who actually even morph into being an engineer at the end of the whole process. And the reverse, and we, have, we do have such people. The program that uh, Ajit mentioned at the University of Astrophysics often brings in young science engineers who have deep interest in science. And they do bring in that uh, reverse connection. So I think there is a real need to really identify such a, such a team. And the numbers on that can always be debated. The strong participation experiment in LIGO India gatherings, as I just mentioned, is very essential. So my suggestion is that future meetings, we should really uh, center around the developmental activity and should be held at one of these lead centers in rotation. I mean, we have to find solutions to the current gap that we see between the builders or the people who are involved in actually doing a lot of the experimental components and the users of the system. So there's a real need to do that. And I, I truly believe while we may look for involvement of students, undergraduate students, many of these programs, they have time short, they've got a long in their, uh, curriculum they have to follow, the deep exposure that comes from a PhD program cannot be minimized, cannot be replaced with anything else. And, but there's been a, a, a sustained trend of losing out on experimental PhD students in this country. Not, I suppose that's in many places. But certainly that's been affecting not just this program, a lot of programs, including our own uh, in the space program as well. Uh, while the capacity to actually launch spacecrafts and satellites is going up uh, significantly, the challenge is really getting people into the labs, and the, and the challenge to actually tell the academia that 
this is actually important work, as important as theoretical work. And I think there's a real need to really bridge this in a manner where at least 50% of the time we could actually have students involved in experimental programs that are very challenging. I think we really need to build it up. These mega projects actually provide us a chance to really turn this around. But without such a, such a team, I believe we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult challenge in front of us. Um, so with that uh, framework, uh, I just, uh, this is a very obvious thing in terms of a model, uh, because today we have, I mean, I think Fred again pointed out the need for a, for a key person to really lead it, a single individual. And then we have some of these structures already in place. But what's important, again, as emphasized by Fred, I didn't see Fred's slides, but I think we seem to have some similar thinking thoughts on these processes. But there's a real need to really break this out into, into many multiple units, each of which moves in parallel with decision-making capacities and overview committees. I think this is very important. These has to be committees where people have time, people have independence, people have independence of thought. And they should really be taken in a very positive manner as, peop as, as, the, as the activities are led in each of these areas of optics. And you know, this, this structure can be reworked. But the basic structure of ensuring that there is independent pursuit at each of these programs in parallel, including you know, operations should be really thought of as an entirely different thing that needs to be done separately. The upgrade program must be an entirely different thing that needs to be led separately with appropriate reviews by independent technical teams. So, I think all of that is fairly obvious, but without such a structure, calling the shots, calling, making decisions uh, will become difficult. So on my last slide, let me just uh, suggest a few things. These are only suggestions. We have to converge on a model to augment the current management setup. And uh, these are not easy uh, to do, uh, but we have to do it. So and that my belief is the discussion and convergence must happen amongst the lead institutes. It's a very key thing. And I mean, I think my view, we've been talking about it for quite some time, but we haven't really done anything about it. I mean, I may be harsh in saying so, but I think we need to put a deadline and say we need to really have this thing done within certain time, maximally utilize the resources and of individuals, the goodwill that we have with some of the key people at the right time, bring it all together into a process that may involve, you know, slightly reworking the current structure. And that's very, very essential. Identifying your project leads. So I think uh, I had a, Tarun and I had a discussion with Rana the other day. Uh, he has suggested he will break it up into pieces, into units, and we could look at maybe identifying project leads for these subsystems. That has to be carefully chosen. Uh, you know, we as in India, when you do projects, we are indeed uh, influenced by sometimes hierarchy, uh, seniority, et cetera, et cetera. But this is one place where we may have to slightly rework some of those things to ensure the best suited is actually picked for this because you depend on them massively in each of these independent elements. And put in place authority for these project leads to exercise decision making. And uh, this can all be done within the government financial rules that exist today. I mean, we are bound by that, but there are ways to do that. And I was just going to give you an example of a case where you know, for example, for travel, a, a junior person has to travel from point A to B and that has to require an approval of the head of the institution, who he or she may not be around all the time. And it's a long process. So, uh, so sometimes it is true. what we do is we tell the project director, every year you have so many such travel that you can permit, that you're allowed to actually approve. At the end of the year, you come to a board where the authority is chairing it, and we ratify it, take care of it. So the instantaneous, immediate decisions are taken care of right away. There are n number of such things that we can, we can actually do within the framework of the bounds that we are all contained in. And I think that's something we really have to be uh, continuously inventive in actually trying to uh, push through the program. And uh, converge on, on this augmentation staff uh, that goes up to the commissioning and beyond. And this, again, I believe this long-term sustenance of staff who have been trained, you know, given the six, seven, eight-year program, we really need to find different strategy for actually retaining them uh, until the commission phase. And as my, I truly believe that you know, there are a lot of students in India who are indeed attracted by technology and promise of science and willing to actually sacrifice for some time the technology phase to really get to this big science that we want to do. We need to come up with ways to really sustain them. 
and uh, prepared. Ah, okay. In terms of the schedule, this is a, this is a. I mean, I believe with the new mega projects, we are moving in a, into a phase where uh, retaining time schedules. You know, schedules where they are all linked. All activities will be linked together. Uh, has been uh, almost done. Uh, is a very important thing, and I think that's very critical to really rework and replan, as I mentioned earlier. Without such a schedule that talks about how a particular chain affects the overall program, uh, decision making becomes very difficult. A uh, model for operation phase to be identified and worked out. Again, as, as a lead is defined for that, I think this, this naturally emerges. And uh, personal training to be put in at the earliest. I think that's all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Shikumar.